Hi, this is Russ Buecher from Controlman Icon, and in this video we're going to take a look at how to do batch shooting. Now, batch shooting is meant for high-volume photographers who are shooting product photography and have perhaps a hundred products in front of them, and they need to take shots of them and attach certain information to the file names or metadata of those shots before submitting those images back to their clients. This could also be used for team or class photos where you have a lot of people to take images of and you could put, for example, their student ID on the file name so it doesn't get mixed up with the others. Now this is all driven from the batch shooting window and we're just going to go up here to the tools menu and go down to batch shooting. We have in the batch shooting window here a batch ID. Now a batch ID is a unique identifier and this could be, for example, the product UPC code or a student ID, this batch ID can be attached to the file name or the folder name or injected into the metadata for the image. So whenever you type in a batch ID, you can just click on activate. So I'm going to just put in a different batch ID. And these batch IDs can be up to 16 characters long, numbers and letters. And when we click activate, it becomes the active batch ID. Now, if we capture an image, it's going to include this batch ID in the file name. I'm just going to connect to the camera here and show you where we set that. This is all set right here. And basically the batch ID is identified by this file name token. If I put CTR at the end, that means batch ID counter. So now your file name is going to start off with this and then a dash and then a counter. It's going to start at zero. And as you take more and more images, when this batch ID is active, the counter is going to increase. When another student or product is ready to be captured, you put in a new number here, activate it. It becomes active and now it resets the counter for that batch ID. So the image that you take of this is going to start off with the batch ID, a dash, and then zero. Next one's going to be dash one, next one dash two, and so on. Now there's a lot of different variations how you could set up the file names, the folder names to respond to this batch ID. And this is all explained in detail in the files and folders tutorial. I'm just going to bring it up here. And here are the folder tokens. So we could put batch ID into the folder name. Here's the batch ID counter that we used in the file name. And this explains through various examples how you could set all of this up. And there's also a video tutorial here, which I highly recommend watching because it shows exactly how to do this and also how to do it using batch shooting. So that's how we get the batch ID into it. But you'll notice there's some other ones here too. Batch BD1 through BD4. We can include something called BD1 through BD4 into the file name or into the folder name. We get that data from the batch metadata window. And here I have just a little bit of sample data this first field here is a batch ID. This is BD1, BD2, BD3, and BD4. So this is one record, and the key on this record is this number, 10,000. So if I was to go in here and type in 10,000, and then go into the preferences, and I'm just gonna ensure I have this set here for batch shooting. I want to embed my batch metadata in my image and I want to show the batch metadata as well. So now when I activate this, it's going to take this batch ID, go find it in the list in the first field, and then retrieve the rest of this information. So this corresponds as file tokens This up here is batch ID. This first line is BD1. The second line is BD2, third line BD3, fourth line BD4. 
So you can put that into the file name, a folder name, or even the metadata. And these are inserted in the IPTC fields in your metadata. Now the advantage of this is that it becomes very easy to find the images associated with a particular student or product. So you do not have to go and rename files after the fact to make them have context for your client. And if you include this information in your file names or in your metadata, then it becomes very easy to search using whatever image archiving system you have, such as Adobe Bridge or ACDC, because you could search for file names and through the metadata with those applications. We had looked at just manually entering this number. Of course, you can make a mistake here when you enter this number in and maybe it brings up the wrong information. So you have the option of using a barcode scanner. If I go back to Tools and Preferences and over to Batch, you can configure a barcode scanner. Now, if you just have a keyboard wedge scanner, and that's the type of scanner that connects, it's using a USB cable, it will scan the barcode directly into here, if you've placed the cursor here. And then you click on Activate and then it will retrieve the information for you. So that's a way, you know, ahead of your shoot, if you have barcodes, this really helps to streamline your workflow because you don't have to manually enter the data as you go and you know it's going to be accurate in the end. You can also configure this down here to enable a serial barcode scanner. And a lot of the new barcode scanners you buy, they have a USB cable, but you can also install a virtual COM port driver and so the scanner thinks it's a serial port scanner, even though it's not connected to a physical serial port on your computer. And these are much more reliable than a keyboard wedge scanner because then you do not have to ensure that your cursor is flashing here before you scan. If you have a keyboard wedge scanner, you'd have to click in here, hit clear, then scan, and make sure your cursor's in here. If it's somewhere else, maybe over here, it's going to try and scan into your shutter speed list. It's not going to make any sense at all. But if you have a serial port scanner, then it knows to always clear this and scan it in. So it saves a huge amount of time and is extremely reliable. And, you know, a, a good quality barcode scanner only runs you $100, $150 US, and it's well worth the investment if you're doing high volume photography. There's a very simple barcode printing service within Controlman Icon. You just click on print and it brings up some barcodes. And here it'll print them in two columns or as many barcodes as you have data. It's important that the actual batch ID is in the barcode. This other information up here doesn't matter at all, but the batch ID has to be here in the barcode. And if you read through the help for the preferences screen, it explains what format this barcode needs to be, and some other things like the prefix and suffix characters required for reading this barcode. Now you can print your own barcodes and prepare them in advance, and as long as the barcode number corresponds to this here, or even if you didn't want to use batch metadata at all, you just scan it in here and it will embed that into your file name or folder or your metadata. And that's it. That's how you do high volume photography in control by Nikon by using batch shooting. Happy tethering.